It's time to build a full PC setup for gaming. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Here's the mission. You don't own a PC at all. You have no parts. So what's it going to take money-wise and component-wise for you to be able to build your own gaming machine and have everything you need? You can do it for semi-cheap. You can do it for a lot of money, eight, 10 grand and more, depending upon the monitor and the graphics cards, so on and so forth that you wanna get. But what do you really need to be able to game most games at near to top end settings, even some of your AAA titles, um, or even do some competitive gaming? Well, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna get uh, surround this around a few things here. Now, I was trying to keep a budget of under $2,000. And the reason why is we're talking all in. And we wanted to have a very good and current gen hardware on pretty much everything. So I've been watching a few channels and this was a monitor that was actually suggested by uh, Linus Tech Tips. They did a recent video on um, best uh, gaming monitor, 140 hertz, 144 hertz gaming monitor for under $200 or something along those lines. I can't remember the exact title. And he had compared the Scepter, yep, the Scepter uh, to um, it was an LG and then some other brand, which was an absolute nightmare. He had nothing but problems with the monitor. So he, uh, basically did the review between this and this LG that he had. So you can pick this up for around 160 to $175, depending upon where you get it. So that's where we're going to start things at. So that partially, so I can get this out of the way and move on to the next stuff. So we'll come back to the monitor more so at the end, but that is the Scepter. Uh, E255B um, gaming monitor. It's 165 hertz refresh rate, a one millisecond response time. Uh, it is a 1920 by 1080 panel. Again, that's where a lot of people are gonna be gaming, but because of the higher uh, response time, um, or the refresh rate, I should say, it's gonna be good for competitive gaming and if you want to have those higher frame rates, which that's still the majority of gaming out there is the um, standard HD gaming or 1920 by 1080. Now with regards to what I was actually basing the system around, I was trying to figure out a way to have a good competitive or current gen and um, I guess fast processor a motherboard with a good feature set that will be stable or hold your CPU stable on it and have a good memory compatibility, as well as have a good graphics card. Uh, obviously that's kind of your center of gaming, if you will, is really the CPU and your graphics card. So we decided to base this around the Ryzen 5 3600. You get this processor for $200 and then the motherboard, which is the one I did the unboxing of last week of the uh, Tough Gaming X, uh, I'm sorry, the Tough Gaming X570 Plus with Wi-Fi from ASUS for $200 as well. So you'd be talking about $400 if you buy it on a new egg. Now, if you go into somewhere like a micro center, if you have one available to you, they'll usually combo these and you'll get between $30 and $50 off. So that becomes a real nice value at somewhere between $350 to $370 for a CPU that's gonna be very um, good for just about anything because it is a six core 12 thread processor. Uh, it does have uh, 3.6 megahertz uh, base clock with boost up to 4.2 gigahertz. I, I think I believe I said megahertz on the um, base clock. That would be very slow. 3.6 gigahertz for the uh, base clock. Uh, so this will handle a lot. I mean, between gaming and some um, streaming, and even if you wanted to get into some uh, rendering of sorts, some video processing, whatever, this will work. It just, you know, it's not gonna be like a 9900K, but also this is less in cost than just the 9900K, which is going to bring me to my next point. The reason I didn't go to an Intel system is mostly cost and the fact that these things are very competitive where they're at. They're just great 
processes right now. AMD's done a very good job uh, finally bringing relevance to their CPU line of processors for the consumer. Um, you know, 9700K is going to cost almost as much as these two together. And then you're gonna have a motherboard that you would need for a, a Z390 motherboard or something along those lines uh, if you're using it for, strictly for gaming. So this is gonna have what we need here. And I chose this motherboard again, and I outlined it in the last video. This has a lot of features set to it. Yes, it's an X570, don't really need the features of the X570 itself with regards to the um, uh, PCIe Gen 4 for, I guess, the, the bus speeds there, because I'm gonna be using a, uh, an M.2 that's a Gen 3. I, I don't wanna spend the money on it and don't really need it. Uh, but for the 10 bucks extra on this one versus the 189 for the non-Wi-Fi version, now we have Wi-Fi as well, and this is 802.11ac, so we're gonna call that relevant. Graphics card. You can pick up a 2060 for under $400 now. The Asus uh, Strix um, RTX 2060 OC edition uh, with the six uh, gigabytes of RAM. This is a very good, very good graphics card. This will hammer out about everything in 1080 and it will play about everything in 1440 or 2K if you want to call that and some stuff in 4K. Um, you're gonna have the RTX features. Yes, you're not gonna go out and drive a PG27UQ 4K mo monitor at 200 frames a second on your AAA titles. It's just, you know, well, 2080 Ti, so let's try to do that, but um, this is going to be for the majority of people. Under 400 bucks. Okay. I had to get an extra fan for the case. This case is the Corsair 220T RGB um, mid-tower gaming case. Since they call it gaming case, you know it's immediately better, right? Whatever. This comes with three of the SP120 RGB Pro fans. Well, I needed a fourth one so I could exhaust. I didn't want to set up two coming in and then move one of my fans. I wanted to leave those alone for aesthetics. Ideally, I would have picked up three of these, but again, it's trying to keep the cost down to what most people are gonna be doing. You could easily add two more of these up top. You could have three coming in, three venting out, then you'll have a pressure neutral system. But we're gonna go ahead and do this. It'll be a pressure positive, I get it. It just needs some cleaning, but this does have um, air filtration on it, if you will. So that's what this is. Uh, I did this, this case is 100 bucks. The reason I chose this case is it's clean, it's Corsair, it's got three RGB good fans already included, uh, which that's worth money. I would ideally like to see this case around that 70 to maybe maybe $80 price point, but because of the fact it does have the fans already included that are, are RGBs, hard to say are RGBs, it does have a tempered glass front. It should be easy to work with uh, and work within this should be a real nice case. It is made of steel, mostly. Um, so this will this is a very solid case. RAM. Sweet spot for Ryzen right now seems to be between that 3600 and 3800 megahertz RAM. Pick this up for 100 bucks. It's uh, 16 gigs of uh, 3600 speed uh, RAM, two eight gig modules. Good buy at that point. It's nice to have a pricing finally coming down. For our storage, we're gonna be using, and again, this is kind of a starting point. I, I could easily put another uh, solid state drive in here for additional uh, storage space for gaming, which I would suggest go out, spend 50, 60 bucks on a 500 to a one terabyte drive, uh, a solid state drive if you can find one, and stick that in there. But starting off, we're gonna go ahead and do a 480 gig uh, M.2 drive from Corsair, it's their MP510. These are really nice drives. And you can get that for 70 to $75. EVGAs, 650G3. I've used these, very good power supplies. They have long warranties. You can again, get this for around 100 to $110. You can kind of see the, the theme here. I'm trying to keep things at a reasonable price so that again, we can keep the overall system under $2,000, which is a lot of money, but we're able to do so. Um, 
This would be a very solid power supply, more than enough power for what we're doing here. 650 watts will be just fine. And then for our peripherals, there was a sale on Corsair for the dark core RGB uh, gaming mouse. It is wireless or wired. I actually typically leave most stuff in wireless now because there seems to be not much for latency there anymore. And the K68 RGB uh, mechanical gaming board uh, or motherboard, no keyboard. I don't know what the hell it is. It's some kind of a board that you press buttons on. So we'll go with that, right? Uh, again, this was, uh, I don't remember, a little over hundred bucks for the two. 130, I, I wanna say, on the sale. Maybe not, not even quite that much. So, we are going to start getting this thing put together. Starting now. Wow, isn't it amazing when things just boot up how they should? I love it. Uh, again, this is another example of do as I say, not as I do type of thing. I didn't test things when they were on the box, but I guess I was under the uh, <laughs> hopes that it would just work and it did. Um, it right out of the box, it recognizes the RAM, shows that it's a 3600 megahertz kit. Um, this is the uh, simple, um mode as they call it or the basic mode easy mode easy mode that's what they call motherboard temperature is 24c 1.44 volts now this has not had a bios update yet i'm going to update this bios i'm going to go through and set the xmp uh profiles uh set the fans all that kind of fun stuff but right off the bat i'm just happy it booted I'm gonna load up Windows. We're going to play a couple of games, make sure everything works, and then um, wrap up this video. Okay, getting things installed here. Um, it This uh, monitor is actually really nice. I've noticed I've got overdrive turned on, um, and there's like little to no ghosting at all or anything. I mean, this thing is rather slick. I'm currently um, downloading a game here to play. 
I wanted to show that right now the refresh rate is at 165 hertz. I've seen things, this is supposedly overclockable to somewhere between 200 and 244 hertz. I'm not gonna play with that because 165 is plenty fun for, fine for what he's gonna be doing with this machine. Um, literally, it's just gonna be a gaming machine for him. So this is, um, I guess I didn't mention who this is for. So a, a guy I know, his grandson has got um, uh, a medical condition that he'd been dealing with. His birthday is coming up and he wanted to get him uh, a computer and this is going to be that computer. So anyway, um, I wanna let this continue to install here. Let's see, is that, how's that doing? Oh, it's still downloading. Okay, I just ran another uh, Cinebench 1489 Ryzen 5 3600. Uh, I've got some stuff running in the background, so I, I realize the score is probably not entirely accurate, but it's close enough. Uh, no overclocking, everything's stock uh, settings right now. Um, all I've done is enabled the XMP, or I believe they call it the DOCP profile for the RAM, and literally that was it. I haven't played with anything else. Um, this computer is just absolutely running amazingly well. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. We're gonna go ahead and boot up uh, Overwatch here. Okay, so we're gonna go into GeForce Experience and we're gonna see what this says that it thinks it should be on. It looks like it's actually already using optimal settings, so that's kind of nice. We've got uh, ambient occlusion on, uh, ultra, SMMA, SMAA high, uh, we have Full screen for the display mode, obviously, dynamic reflections high, ultra for effects and lighting, local fog, uh, local reflections is on, uh, re refraction quality is high, render scale is set, resolution at 1920 by 1080, we know that, shadow is ultra, epic at 16 by for the texture filtering quality, texture quality is at high, um, this should be awesome. So let's go ahead and let's go back in here and play this now. And I'm noticing that we're capping off the frame rates. Obviously, we're still limited by the, the display itself at 165 for gaming. And we got everything on ultra apparently. I want to just go in here and see where it's setting it at. So we got field of view. Okay, V sync is off. Buffering thing. Okay, those are graphics qualities at ultra. Probably doesn't need to be that high, but let's see how it plays and then we'll come back. Yeah, quick play and Okay, so right off the bat, I'm sitting at 126, 115 frames a second, which you know, that's something for a 1080p. This thing, this screen looks amazing. I, mean, I don't know if you can, you probably can't really tell this, but wow. I mean, this screen looks absolutely stunning for a $160 display. Well, let's see if we can get this guy here. Ooh, I just got smoked. Walked into three, huh? We're on ultra for settings. Frames are well over 100. Right now I'm at 125. 130. Let's see what it's like once I get into some action here. Oh, I just got sniped. Hardcore. Boy, this is smooth. I mean, this is really smooth. And I'm playing this wirelessly right now too. I wanna to mention that this is, um, there is zero lag. It, at least I don't feel any, any issues at all. I'm getting smoked here. Oh, I got him. I don't really know where he's at. Oh, there he is. Got him that time. I'm really pleased with this. I mean, this is 
All I can really say is wow. <laughs> oh. All right. That was not impressive. Okay, I'm not uh, obviously amazing at this. At least I'm right now, I'm not doing very well. I usually do better than this. I think he's going to come back and do the exact same thing to me. What do you think? Is he right there? Ah. What in the world is that dog doing? Ha! That was lucky. I'm not going to pretend that was anything but luck, because that was just pure luck. Where did he go? Up oh, there, you got me. All right. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Right, as far as gaming goes, this thing is butter smooth on ultra settings in uh, Overwatch. Um, yeah, this isn't meant to be anything uh, other than just a quick build and an example of what this can do. And anyway. Let's go wrap this uh, video up for the day. Okay, there you have it. Um, really, really nice machine. Great setup. This Scepter uh, monitor, uh, 24 and a half inch gaming monitor. It's a 1080p panel, 165 hertz uh, for the refresh rate, um, one millisecond grade to grade. Uh, I mean, it comes with a display port cable in the box. The stand is metal. There's no, you know, raising and swivel, all that stuff, but it does have a tilt to it. Even comes with a screwdriver to install everything. I mean, it's really impressive for that $160 to $175 range, depending upon uh, uh, where you end up getting it. Uh, I might pick up one of these for myself, to be honest with you. I mean, this is a really nice panel. Colors are good. They're not amazing, but it's a inexpensive panel compared to like my Asus uh, PG27UQ, which originally was a $2,000 panel. Uh, now you can pick them up for around $1,500 with the new stuff they're coming out. But still, I mean, that's a massive swing. 4K ultra high def versus a 1080p entry level gaming panel that looks amazing. I mean, you get that something like this from Asus, so you're going to be paying $250 to $300 most likely. Um, I went with the all Corsair peripherals, partially because we have the Car Corsair case with the Corsair fans, Corsair memory, uh, Corsair keyboard, Corsair mouse, everything links up very nicely. Um, I was able to come up with a combination that I personally, I guess, kind of liked for uh, this motherboard being that has that yellow slash gold accents on it. Uh, so I did a yellow gold theme, or I'm sorry, a white and gold theme for um, the lighting in there and, you know, that can be changed at will, obviously, but um, computer is very snappy. Uh, I absolutely love how this uh, Ryzen 5 3600 is running. It's just, it's amazing. I mean, obviously we're using it in a game just to kind of get an example. I'm not going to run a gamut of, of uh, benchmarks out there. Those are out there. Just wanted to build this, put it together, give you an idea of what you could do for an all-in cost for under two thousand dollars. Might be able to pick this up for you know if you really are frugal and you shop the hell out of things, you might be able to get around sixteen hundred dollars for everything. But I mean that's what it takes to get into a nice gaming rig, and that's what I would consider this a very nice gaming rig. Anyway, hopefully you liked today's video. If you did you know what to do. If you didn't like it and you know what else to do, hopefully it's not that, please hit that subscribe button for me as it does help me out. Stay tuned and we will see you uh, next week. Thanks.